behalf of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this coming of Sunday of turn around. And God will turn your life around into a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. The anointing for supernatural progress. Everybody desires to make progress. Everybody desires to go forward. We all make efforts to go forward. But not everybody, part of the efforts they put. There are people that work so hard with the intention to go forward. But there are forces that are contending with them that make them to go in a direction that they don't desire to go. People put efforts, work hard, in, with the intention to go forward. But not everybody with the intention to go forward actually goes forward. There are people that have intentions to go forward, but there are forces that are working in their lives that makes them to go in a direction contrary to the direction that they desire to go. And these are the forces that produce stagnation. And these are the forces that produce delay. Stagnation means there is no movement at all. You are only moving round in circles. In stagnation, you are not moving forward at all, but you are moving in circles. You are tomorrow is equal to your yesterday. That means you are not making progress. Where you were four years ago is where you are today. That means your yesterday has become your today. That means you are not making any progress. In stagnation, your tomorrow becomes your yesterday. That means you are just moving in circles. You are not moving forward at all. Today, Leo, every yoke of stagnation, every yoke of delay will be destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. When you suffer stagnation, you are bound to suffer delay. God was speaking to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses number 6. Deuteronomy 1.6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mountain. You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn ye and take your journey. That means Take action to change your position. Turn ye and take your journey and go to the Mount of the Amorites unto all the places near there too in the plains, in the hills, in the Yale, in the south, by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, unto, the, unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates, you have stayed long in this mount. You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. You have dwelt long enough in that position. You have dwelt long enough in that 
career, katika taaluma that hiyo. career position. Taaluma you hiyo stayed hiyo. long enough umekaa sana pale. in that position. You stayed long enough umekaa sana without a family. Bila you stayed long enough umekaa sana in debts. Katika madeni. You stayed long enough umekaa sana in financial problems. Katika matatizo you stayed kipeza. long enough umekaa sana where you are. It's time for you to take action and hatua. come out of where you are. Na utoke mahali hapo ulipo. So God Mungu is against that nation. You have stayed long enough. Zaidi, long enough. Zaidi, zaidi, long enough. Zaidi, in that position. Long enough. Zaidi, zaidi, long enough. Zaidi, zaidi, long enough zaidi, zaidi, without a family. Familia, long enough. Zaidi, zaidi, in debts. Long enough. Zaidi, zaidi, in financial problems. Long kifeda, enough. Zaidi, in the same position. It's time to change your story. And for your story to change, you must deal with the forces that are causing stagnation. One of the causes of stagnation is that stagnation is a cause. It is a cause. And it must be broken for your story to change. It must be broken for you to go forward. It must be broken for you to make progress. In Deuteronomy 28, the number one cause of stagnation is a cause. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee or which the Lord will permit in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until thou have destroyed thee. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed you. He shall put a yoke of iron on your neck until he have destroyed you. A yoke, an example, a yoke is that thing that is put on animals. For example, the bulls that are plowing, they put a yoke on their neck. Number one, to determine the direction they take. A yoke is put on the neck of animals. Number one, the one that controls the animal or the yoke will determine the direction that the animals will take. And number two, he that controls the yoke on the neck of the animal will determine what the animal can do and what the animal cannot do. A yoke on the neck of animal will determine what the animal can do and what the animal cannot do. So when the devil puts a yoke on your neck, number one, it will determine the direction that your life takes. You may want to go forward, but he that controls the yoke will direct you to go to another direction apart from the direction which you desire to go. 
he that controls the yoke is the one that determines the direction that you take. So you will work hard, put all the efforts, and your direction, you want to go forward. But the one controlling the yoke will control your life and direct your life in a direction that is contrary to the direction that you want to go. He will put a yoke on your neck until he has destroyed it. So when the yoke is on your neck, your destiny can be destroyed. Your destiny can be crushed. You want to go forward. You are working hard. You are putting all your efforts. But the one that is controlling the yoke will direct your life in the direction that is contrary to the direction that you want to go. When you are under a curse of stagnation, the one that controls the yoke directs you away from the direction of going forward. A yoke on your neck. A yoke on your neck. When you shingo lako. So the enemy cannot destroy you. He cannot enslave you until he has put a yoke on your neck. And the one that has put a yoke on your neck is the one that will control your life. Is the one that will control your destiny. So whoever controls the yoke is the one that controls your life. Is the one that controls the direction of your life. And is the one that controls your your destiny. A yoke on your neck determines what you can do and what you cannot do. There are people that desire to do things, desire to achieve things, but the yoke on their neck will not allow them to achieve those things. Is a cause. Stagnation is a cause. Is a yoke on your neck that determines the direction you take. And the one that controls the yoke is the devil. He will never direct your life forward. He will never direct your life to make progress. So every effort to go forward will be contested by the one that is holding the yoke on your neck. Today, Leo, by the anointing, oh, every yoke that the devil has put on your neck to cause mwako. stagnation, to cause delay, it will be destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So Yesu. there are people that work so hard with the intention to go forward in life, but there are forces that are controlling these people that makes them to go in another direction that is contrary to the direction that you want to go. You, you want to go forward. But the one that controls your yoke will divert your attention to another direction. You want to build a house. And the one holding your neck directs your money to wasteful living, pleasurable living, living in immorality. You clear all the money. The intention was to go forward. But the one controlling your neck directed you into another direction. You consumed all the money. And when you come back, you wanted to go forward. But the enemy directed you into pleasurable living. You cleared all the money. Next time you say, this time, I want to buy land. You take a loan. And when you take a loan, the one that controls the neck, the yoke on the neck, 
opens your eyes Ado, to something. He says, hey, what about this thing? What about this one? Did you see this one? And then you are diverted to wasteful spending again. You clear the money and then your eyes open. You say, next time, I must do it. Next time in riches, you gain take another loan. And Satan sends a, a prodigal son your way who tells you this December we go to Mauritius you spend loan in Mauritius you come back zero you wanted to go forward but the one controlling your neck directed your attention into wasteful living there is a force that is beyond you, that is controlling you to the direction that is contrary to the direction that you want to go. Whoever controls your neck controls your life. Just like an animal, whoever controls the yoke on that neck of the animal determines the direction of the animal, determines what the animal can do, determines what the animal cannot do. So a yoke puts and due influence in your life. Number one, a yoke puts and due influence in your life. And due influence, you are influenced to do things without your permission. And due influence. A yoke on your neck makes the devil to put undue influence in your life. Just like you can put undue influence on the neck of animals and they will go to the direction where you are putting the pressure. So yokes put undue influence on your life. Number two, a yoke is a spiritual slavery. Is a spiritual slavery. You don't do what you want. You do what the enemy wants. You don't do what you desire. You do what the enemy wants. So it is a satanic slavery. Number three, a yoke is satanic domination. It's a satanic domination. Satan influences you to go towards a direction that will never profit your life. A satanic domination. Number four, a yoke is a force that it holds individuals back from where they really want to go. A yoke is a force that holds individuals back from where they really want to go. You want to go forward, but the devil says by the yoke, this direction is a force that holds individuals back from where they really want to go. You really want to go forward. You are working hard to go forward. But the yoke on your neck is a force that holds you back from going to where you really want to go. Every yoke on your neck today will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 61 and verses 1. Isaiah 61 verses 1. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound by the anointing have been anointed to proclaim claim liberty to the captives. When you have a yoke on your neck, you are a captive. You are a prisoner. A captive. And a prisoner. You are physically walking, but spiritually, you are walking with your prison. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is what? Spiritual. Your spiritual status determines your physical status. Life is spiritual. It determines the physical. It determines biological. The spiritual dominates the physical. The spiritual dominates biology. Now, behind every sickness and disease is what? Is the spirit of what? Infirmity. Your health is spiritual. Your prosperity is spiritual. Everything concerning your life is far spiritual. Your spiritual status determines your physical status. The Bible says that Rachel and Leah were buried. Their womb was closed. Who closed it? The devil. So even giving birth is spiritual. God opened the womb of Leah. That is spiritual. Life is spiritual. So your spiritual status determines your physical status. Yokes are spiritual, but they determine your life in the physical realm. Hello? Is this thing entering? Life is what? Until you take your spiritual life seriously, you will never see impact in the physical realm. Life is far spiritual before it is physical, before it is biological, before it is medical. The spiritual controls the biological, controls the physical, controls the medical. To proclaim liberty to the captives. If there are yokes on your neck, you are a captive of Satan. It will determine the direction you will take. It will determine what you can achieve, what you cannot achieve. And there are people that are walking with their prisons. There are spiritual prisons. Physically, they are walking, but spiritually, they are walking with their prisons inside. So there are things they can never achieve. There are things they can never take. There are things they can never enjoy. By the anointing of today, all the yokes on your neck will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prison houses that are holding you today, they will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. They will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. They will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. First Samuel chapter 9. Life is spiritual. 
until you take your spiritual life seriously, you will never have impact in the physical realm. God is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. You are either under the influence of God or under the influence of devils. So life is spiritual. First Samuel 9. 21. And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore, then speakest you thus so to me. My, I come from the smallest tribe. Not only that, in the smallest tribe, my family is the least, the least important, is the poorest. For a family to be the least in a tribe, that is a curse. That is a curse. Why should your family be the last in a particular tribe? Why should your family be the smallest in a particular tribe? Why should your family be the poorest in a particular tribe? That must be a cause. So the family of Saul was a family that was under the cause of stagnation. They were making efforts to become better, but they were still the least in spite of their efforts. They were making efforts to become rich. But in spite of all their efforts, they still remain the least. They still remain the smallest. They still remain the poorest. Not only that, the only thing that the family owned was a donkey. And that donkey got stolen. And the entire family was looking for the donkey because it was the only livelihood. The least. They were making efforts to become great, but they still remain least. They made efforts to become great, but their tomorrow was always yesterday. What happened to them four years is what happened today to them. The least, the smallest, the, the least important. First Samuel chapter 10. Then Samuel took a vial of oil, poured it upon his head, and kissed him, and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? And when thou art departed from me today, thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelza. And they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father has left the care of the asses and saw it for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shall thou go on forward from thence, from today, thou shalt go on forward. That means before he couldn't go forward. Before he couldn't make progress. Before he suffered stagnation. Before he suffered delay. But after the anointing, Samuel said, and from today you shall go forward. That means previously he was not going forward. He was not making progress. The yoke of stagnation was on their neck. So by the anointing, 
the anointing Upako. destroys Uaribu. the yoke of stagnation. Nira ya kudumazwa. It doesn't stop there. Aikome the wako. anointing Upako. empowers you, qualifies you, and equips you Na to go forward. Za you may say, Nisembe. number one, ya kwanza. the anointing Upako huu. destroys the curse. It destroys the yoke of stagnation, ya of delay. Na and then number two, apili, the anointing upako, empowers you, qualifies you, itimu, and equips you ya to go forward. Za the anointing, Upako. it destroys the yoke of stagnation. Ya it destroys the yoke of nira. delay. Ya and number two, ya pili. it does not leave you there. Hapo. It empowers you, it qualifies you, and it equips you for you to go forward. So by this anointing of the day, that yoke of stagnation will be destroyed out of your neck in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this anointing, you will be empowered, you will be qualified, and you will be equipped to make progress in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that is your portion, can you shout a bigger amen? Look at Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. One, two, three, if you are there, let's read. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his bad day shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yoke shall be destroyed. Why? Because of what? Because of of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke, that yoke that will not allow you to go to the direction you desire. That yoke that will not allow you to go forward. That yoke that will not allow you to achieve that which you want to achieve. That yoke will be destroyed by the anointing today in the name of Jesus Christ. So there are yokes that don't allow people to go forward. So stagnation can be a generational curse in a family. Peter tells us that by virtue of the sins Petero, anasema, kwa zile zile of our zami, ancestors, mababu, zile, that those sins zami, that were committed by our ancestors produces, produced a pattern of a useless life. Wa a pattern of fruitless life. A pattern of barrenness. First Peter chapter 1. Petero, Verses number 18. So stagnation can be inherited. The grandparents suffered stagnation. The parents have suffered stagnation. Now the children are also suffering stagnation. So they say, like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18. I'm reading, I'm reading the New Living Translation. For so you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. Empty life. Empty life. Amplified Bible says useless life. Fruitless life. Stagnated life you inherited from your ancestors that practiced evil traditions. But he says, 
that the blood and he paid for you. The ransom he paid was not mere gold and silver. He paid for you with the precious life blood of Christ. The sinless, a spotless lamb of God. So the sins of the ancestors can produce a pattern of limitation, a pattern of stagnation, a pattern of fruitless life, a pattern of barrenness that is handed over from generation to generation. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatever our sins, whatever sins our ancestors committed that has produced a useless life, a life of stagnation, a life of emptiness, barrenness that has been handed over to us by the blood of Jesus. All those sins are blotted out of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So stagnation can be a cause that is handed over from generation to generation. But today, by the power of the blood and by the power of the anointing, stagnation will end in the name of Jesus Christ. Delay will end in the name of Jesus Christ. Stagnation will end in the name of Jesus Christ. In Proverbs 4.18, the Bible says the part of the just is like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter to the perfect day. What is the perfect day until Jesus returns? So the will of God is for you to keep on making progress, to keep on making progress, to keep on going forward until the day Jesus returns. But for you to make progress and to continue to make progress until Jesus returns, those yokes on your neck must be destroyed. Samuel said to the children of Israel Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 12, Samuel verses 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12, Samuel verses number 6. 1 Samuel 10, 1 Samuel chapter 12, Samuel verses number 6. 1, 2, 3, let's read. And Samuel said unto the people, Samuel It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers out of the land of Egypt. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Samuel is saying, People don't just go forward. He takes the hand of God to push them forward. It is God that pushed Moses and Aaron forward. People don't just go forward. It is the invisible hand of God that pushes people forward. And that invisible hand of God is the anointing. It will come upon you today. And it will push you forward in the name of Jesus Christ. It will push you forward in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Samuel 16. Verse 13. Then Samuel took a hold of oil and anointed him, anointed David in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. After the anointing, what happened? Verses 16. 
Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning in prayer and half and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit permitted by God comes upon you that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, provide me a man now that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Behetlemite, that is cunning in play, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent a messenger to Jesse, Ascend me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesus took an ass laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a key, and sent them by David to his son to Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his ambearer. And Saul said to Jesse, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he has sound favor in my sight. After the anointing, the anointing created space for David in the palace. The anointing Upako. created space. Ulitengeza na pasi. The anointing Upako. created vacancy Ulitengeza na pasi pale. for David. Kwa ajili ya Daudi and empower David to occupy the place. That is the mystery of the anointing. It, create, it creates for you a place ahead. It creates for you a place on top and empowers you to occupy the place. Nobody will create place for you. Nobody will create vacancy for you. But the anointing will create for you a place ahead. Will create for you a place on the top and will empower you to occupy the place. So it doesn't only destroy yokes, but it also create space for you ahead. You need a space ahead for you to go ahead. Nobody will create space for you ahead. Nobody will create for you a space at the top. But the anointing will create for you a place at the top and will empower you to occupy the place. So by the anointing, creating for you a place at the top, creating for you a place ahead, it empowers you to go forward. After this anointing, spaces will be created at the workplaces, specifically for you in the name of Jesus Christ. After this anointing today, spaces ahead, spaces at the top will be created for you to occupy them in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, can you shout a bigger amen? So the anointing creates space for you at the top. That is why Samuel said to the children of Israel, people don't just go forward. It is God that advances them forward. It is God that pushes them forward. David was anointed and a space was created at the palace and only David could occupy the space. By this anointing today, may the anointing go ahead of you. Create for you a place at the top. Create for you a place at the front. And empower you to occupy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Empower you to occupy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what causes delay? 
delay Kugawia. can be caused by Satan. Yeah, na shetani. By devils. Na mapepo wake. Delay Kugawia. can be caused by devils. Yeah, na mapepo achapu. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Wa kwanza mbili. This is where prayer and warfare is very vital. Sir, madam, nobody will force you to fast and pray. Nobody will force you to do warfare. If you don't fast, if you don't pray, if you don't do warfare, life will teach you hard lessons. Nobody will beat you because, because you didn't fast, because you didn't pray, because you didn't do warfare. Life itself will beat you. Life itself will beat you. Life itself will beat you. In First Thessalonians chapter two. Are you there? Verse seventeen. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Hey, we endeavored more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we will have come unto you, even I, Paul, not once, but once and again, but Satan endowed us. We desired with great passion, great desire to come to you, not once, once and again, but Satan hindered us, Satan hindered us, Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. And when they were hindered, they suffered stagnation and they suffered delay. Satan hindered us. The only language that Satan understands is warfare. Is what? Warfare. And therefore, to end stagnation, satanic stagnation, satanic hindrance, you must engage in fasting, in prayers, in warfare. Not every demon goes out Utoka. without fasting and prayer. Bila kufunga, na you die eat from December to January. January. You make December, December. The way you eat December Bila is the way you eat January. You now January. continue from December. You Nendelea eat throughout the year December. till December. Mwaka there are Zima. certain forces Unangu. that will never leave you. We wanted to come. What happened, Paul? You, Paul, of, Paul the Apostle, the way you anointed, huh? Satan hindered you? Yes, Satan hindered us. And the only answer to satanic opposition, to satanic resistance, is warfare. Not warfare with emptiness. Warfare, full of the Holy Ghost. Warfare, full of the Holy Ghost. And you can't be full of the Holy Ghost without engaging in prayers, in fasting, to fill your belly with the anointing. So one of the causes of stagnation and delay is satanic hindrance. We will have come unto you, not once, no, once, and we tried once, he hindered us. And we tried again, he hindered us. Ah, 
We really had great desire to come. Tulitaka sana tuje. He stopped us. Lakini akatuzuia. The devil stopped us. Shetani alituzuia. The devil stopped us. Shetani alituzuia. He stopped us. Alituzuia. The only answer to satanic delay satanic hindrances is warfare is what warfare that is why I told you nobody will beat you because you are not fasting because you are not praying life will beat you when Satan hinders you, when, when he stops you, anapokupo when anapokupo he blocks you, anapokupinga. sir, you will wake up. You don't need to tell a lazy man to work. If you have told him several times to work and he's not working, hunger would teach him a lesson. When the hunger is too much, he will leave bedroom. Isn't it? He will come to a sitting room. When hunger is too much, he will go to the kitchen. When there is nothing in the kitchen, he will open the door. He will come out of the house. He will come out of the compound. He will go and look for what to eat. Nobody will force you to fast, Ufunga. to pray, na maombi. to warfare. Na but if you don't do them, life ufanya. will teach you very hard lessons. Life magumu. will be so hard on you. Sana kwako. So every child of God, you must mungu. pay the price in garama. prayers, na in fasting, na kufunga, in warfare, vita to get rid of satanic influences. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9. If you see a man dying of hunger, that is the most useless man on the planet earth. If you see a man dying of hunger, that he was angry, he slept, he slept, he slept, he slept, he slept until he died. That is a useless, useless man on the planet earth. A man even is a fool. He sleeps. The stomach begins to hunger. To terrorize him. He will wake up. <laughs> and then he will stand up. He will go to the sitting room. And there is nothing. He will go to the kitchen. He will look, there is nothing. If this man is not a terrible, foolish man, he will open the door, go out to deliver himself from hunger. The easiest life, the easiest life, if you want an easy life, then you must be able to work hard. Not yeah, only in your in your labor, si but in chaji. spiritual things. I told kiro. you, life is spiritual. Maisha ni ya kiro life kwanza. is what? Spiritual. Maisha huwa ni ya kiro in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, the Bible tisa. says, Yasema, a great door and effectual is open unto me, and yangu. there are many adversaries. Na kuna wengi a great door, effectual door that is designed to usher you to greatness. That is designed that when you go through the door, you make progress. It's open unto you. But there are many adversaries, many demons that don't want you to go through the door. Every door that is closed in your life by Satan, it brings stagnation and it brings delay. 
when you can't go through a door, you suffer stagnation. When a door is closed against you, you suffer stagnation. Who closes doors? Doors of prosperity. Doors of success. Doors of speed. Doors of progress. Doors of promotion. It is adversaries. It is the devils. A great door, if is open, who open it? God. What happened? The devil showed up to make sure you don't go through the door. And when doors are closed, you suffer stagnation. To move from where to where you are, to the next level, a door must open. A spiritual door. There are spiritual doors and there are physical doors. There are spiritual doors. To move from one face to the next face, there is a spiritual door that needs to open to usher you to the next level. When that spiritual door is closed, you suffer stagnation and you suffer delay. God is saying, God even was speaking to Job. Look at Job 38. Job 38, yes. Job 38. We read from verses 8. Our time is gone. Job 38. Verses 8, because of time. Are you there? Verses 8. Or let's begin from verses 5. This is God speaking. Okay, verses 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened the counsel by the words without knowledge? Cut up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare thou, if thou hast understanding, who has laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it, whereupon are the foundations thereof fasting, or who laid the cornerstones thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors, who shut up the sea with doors. So the sea has doors. Spiritual doors that you cannot see. Indian Ocean has doors. Atlantic has doors. Even Lake Victoria has doors that keeps Lake Victoria, where it is, if those spiritual doors open, Lake Victoria will fly all over East Africa. Spiritual doors. Did you see that? Hello? Did you see that? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it Break forth as if it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and the thick darkness, swaddling bad for it, and break up for it, my decree place, and set bars, and doors, set bars, and doors. So there are bars, there are doors that are set in the Indian Ocean to keep the waters within Indian Ocean. 
doors, Milango. spiritual doors Milango that you can't see. They keep the sea within where it's supposed to be. He shattered the doors to keep the waters within the oceans. If the doors open, the waters will come out of the oceans and will come out of the seas and will come to the land. There are spiritual doors and there are physical doors. Doors Milango. interface Milango one level to the other level. Doors Milango. interface Ubalilisha. where you are and where you ought to be. For uwe. you to go to where you ought to be, a uwe. spiritual door needs to open. So there are spiritual doors. And when the devil closes them, you are held in stagnation in that reign for a long time. So there are spiritual doors. There are spiritual gates that need to open in order for you to move to the next phase. There are doors that need to open for you to possess your possessions. Doors Milango. allow movement of people watu. and things na vitu. in and out. Na when the doors, Milango. when your spiritual doors Mi are closed, there is no movement of blessings Mamba into your life. There is no movement of people watu. into your life. Hello? That is why sometimes when your doors are closed, even your relatives who can help you cannot help you. Why? Because the channel that they are supposed to access your life in the spiritual realm is closed. Spiritual doors. A great door and effectual door is open. But there are many what? There are many what? Adversaries. So there are spiritual doors that needs to open. Doors are a system of access. Doors are a system of what? Access. You have doors in your house. They don't give you access to the same place. The door of the kitchen gives you access to the kitchen. If you are hungry, which door do you go to? Which one do you go to? Kitchen. If you are hungry, you don't go to the door of the bedroom. You don't go to the door of the bedroom. And if you are hungry and the door of the kitchen is closed, although you are big, you really suffer. You really do what? You are helpless. Something very small that will happen or will have opened that door. You don't have it. Food is there, but you cannot access it. You suffer hunger because gets give you access to territory. You can have access to a territory, but you need to have access to a door to possess your possession. If you enter into your compound, but you don't have the key to the door to your house, you will still be a refugee in that territory of your compound. So, Gates need to open. And doors need to open for you to move to the next phase of your life. And sometimes, the devil has shut the doors. The devil has shut the gates. So what you need to do, engage in warfare to open the doors, to open the gates in order to be movement of blessings into your life and in order for you to move from where you are to where you ought to be. If a door is closed, 
If you stay one year there, when the, open, when the door open, when the door open, so time does not change anything except your age. Time will only change your age. It will only add your age. But for you to change things, you must take steps. You must engage in warfare. You must engage in prayer to open the spiritual doors that will give you access to the next level. They say come for prayer. You despise. Your doors are closed. Who will open them for you? They are spiritual doors. And until they open, you can never live where you are. Look at Isaiah 60. I want us to end here with three. Pick it up next time. Isaiah 60 verses 11. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Wake up. This is you continue saying, one day, my life will change. One day, my life will change. You must take steps to change your life. Isaiah 60 verses 11. Isaiah 16, 11. 1, 2, 3. Let's read. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. These are spiritual gates. They shall not be shut day nor night that may, may bring on today the forces of the Gentiles and their kings may be brought. So when they are shut, men cannot bring to you the forces Process of the Gentiles. Spiritual gates must open before the physical gates will open. Spiritual doors must open before the physical doors will open. Doors of prosperity. Doors of favor. Doors of progress. Doors of success. Doors of promotion. They need to open. Otherwise, you stay there. Stay there. It is closed. On the other side, your blessings are waiting, but the door is closed. You can't access it until you open it, and you open it by warfare. All the devils that are blocking the doors of prosperity, the gates of prosperity, I bind you now, I cast you down, away from the doors of prosperity, away from the gates of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus, Again, let's throw the doors of prosperity. Open up now. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, open the doors of prosperity. Open the gates of prosperity for me to prosper, for there to be movement of the people that are carrying the forces of the Gentiles into my life. In Jesus' name. You open spiritual doors by engaging in prayer, fasting, and warfare. There were gates and doors in the Red Sea. When God wanted the children of Israel to move to the other side, he opened the door. The Bible says the waters were divided hither and thither. A door opened. And they went through. After they went through, God closed the door. Oceans have doors. Seas have doors. There are spiritual doors and gates that are leading to your life. They must open for you to change level. We are going to pray that every door closed against your life, it will open up in the name of Jesus Christ. Until your spiritual doors open, you can never change level. You cannot access your next level. God is saying to Job, Job, did you know that there are doors at the sea? 
and those doors have held the sea where it is. It is not able to break as it desires. I have held it there. I have held the sea there by doors. So there are spiritual doors that need to open for your life to change. Your life will change in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life will change in the name of Jesus Christ.